Okay, continuing ambient light rejection screen paint using ambient light rejection technology gain. We are going to be uh, painting a fixed frame screen. I recommend I grab a few things upstairs. So we're going to be painting a fixed frame screen today. I just got to get my rollers out. Figure out which one we're going to do. So we're going to redo the 135 inch screen I have on the wall because people have been asking me about um, how to paint a fixed frame screen. Let me show you the easy way how to do it. Also, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that bar print. Some of y'all made of uh hey how you doing? So some of y'all may have gotten in the middle of your screen. So in the middle of the screen, there's a big bar right there. Anytime you have a fixed screen screen, you've got a wooden frame screen, you're gonna have a support bar in the middle. The problem that some people run into when doing fixed frame screens is when they paint the screen, they run across that bar. It's wet. But when the screen dries, you'll have an imprint from here all the way down to the bottom of the bar. So, when you're watching a movie, this bar is going to eventually pop up in the middle of your screen. Especially when you're doing white scenes, that bar literally pops up, that, that mark, and it's very irritating. So, I had a customer contact me about a couple days ago, and he got the bar in the middle of the screen. I said, look, a real fast way on how to, how to get around that. Let me, I'm trying to get my roller out of this, uh, this, this uh, bag I got it in, so I can them out because this right here the two paint rollers that I use right here one actually longer I need a really good reach to go I'm painting my screen I was going to do this for Facebook but the problem with the camera angles on Facebook is the zoom oh, I just gotta get nice for this the zoom basically comes in too far and I can't really show what I'm doing so I'm gonna have to just do another video for them over there Alright, so we got that off. So let's swap these out. Just swapping up our rollers right here. Put on something else. And we'll go from there. I don't know why. You gotta stop sending me textbooks, man. People be sending textbooks across your Keep in mind, if you ever did live stream before, it flashes for a couple minutes and it's gone. Short and brief. That's what works better. Because I'm not going to get a chance to read it. I'm not going to stop the video to read it. Because this is a paint on demonstration. So things are done differently in these videos. All right, there you go. So this is my long extended one. That will give me a better reach. That's the one I like to use. I've had this for about, about five years. This is my, this thing is pretty beat up, but I love it. I won't trade it in for nothing. All right, so what you saw in the front when I, in the um, thumbnail, this is what you saw. So everyday rollers, we got frog tape, and that right there is the uh, material that I'm gonna put in the back of my screen um, so I don't get that bar imprint. See how my screen looks here? See how smooth that looks? That's a paint roller right there. No professional job, just uh, painted over the screen. Oh, somebody's got a, an angry attitude already in the room. Let's see where this fellow's at because he's upset about something. But I, we don't have time for that. So, goodbye. But anyway, so as you can see how smooth it is, there's no bar prints, nothing in the screen. That's because you got to use that material to do it. Every so once in a while, and I'll explain to you before, we get some of Jamie's followers or Crow's followers will pop into the room. They don't buy my product, but they're always upset about what I do. So I don't know what your product is, man. Get a cup of coffee, watch some cartoons. I don't know, work it out. Right, that's not my problem. Ugh. We get them in the room every so once in a while. They don't buy my product, they don't support my product. But yet they're always in here watching my videos, which is funny. Very angry people. 
All right, I can't get this off this roller off of here. So like I said, everyday rollers, nothing expensive at all. And so I got to do two of these paint on demonstrations. I got to do one for Facebook and one for this one right here. This is neat. The one on Facebook, which I can do a smaller screen, would be easier. <sighs> Make sure you get some. And after that, you can just throw the roller in here. I say the best way to pull the roller off, just get a plastic bag. Don't use these because I need these for shipping, but something I had around the house. But you can just yank the roller off, throw it in the bag, and trash it. Or if you want to save your roller, you don't want to keep rebuying them, just tie it up in the bag. It's air sealed, you don't have to worry about it drying out. And that's it, you save it for later. You know, so that don't want to trash. So I just take it and I just tuck it in right there in the hole in the paint roller. Just wrap it up and I can use this for another demonstration. So they're going through a whole bunch of rollers. And just like that, all wrapped up and neat, done. Put that right there. I'll tell you something real interesting, and I tell stories as I do this. Really interesting. Let me get something here. Something doing cross contamination. Uh, let me see if we got it here. Something to use. Wipe this down a little bit. So we got the movie chairs. Got an old shirt in here I'm not using. Anything will work. No stop. That'll work. So, anyway, I'll tell you some interesting stories. One interesting story. So anyway, about a couple of days ago, now keep in mind, anyone who's overseas knows for a fact that when you pay for any item, you pay for a custom tax. I have friends that live in Dubai, I have friends over in England, I have friends in different parts of the country, and that's one of the things they pay for is that custom tax, which is messed up, but they do have to pay. It doesn't say anywhere where we pay for the custom tax. And I've been shipping overseas for a long time, which I'm kind of bummed out that, you know, I'm still calling PayPal overseas. So I'm basically trying to ship something to him every day through PayPal to see if they relate to the restrictions. Because I do want to ship to my overseas customers, but like I said, unfortunately, because of COVID, our hands are tied on this. So I'm bummed out on that too. So anyway, this customer contacts me on Facebook and goes into this complete, utter, insane rant about wanting to kill me because I didn't pay for his custom tax. You hear how crazy that sounds? He's mad at me because I didn't pay for his custom tax. Now, unless you just was born yesterday, and I'm pretty sure you have ordered stuff in your country, that means you know that you have to pay a custom tax. So why would you expect for me to pay your custom tax? I'm like, okay, it's one born every day. So, okay, so this is what you want to do. Now, even though if you have an other, another roller on here, you do want to wash this off, or you just want to you just want to clean these edges right here. Because what happens is if you are painting with another color paint, you get something called cross-contamination. If you paint your screen, say you have a roller on here, you pull it off, it's you're painting the screen that was maybe gray or white or whatever it may be, or something you were using, and then you slap a clean roller on there, you could have paint. And these areas right in here, these little traces right in here where the brush pushes up, it could have paint right over in here. So when you go to roll your screen, you could have a gray streak just right across your screen. Like, where the freak did that come from? That came from whatever leftover paint you had around that edge. Pushed up on that roller when you're pushing down and just rolled right across your screen. So you want to make sure all that's cleaned up real nice. Some stuff that I've done to myself. I was painting this screen and I got this white streak right across the screen. Like, where the heck did that come from? I realized it was actually from the previous paint roller I was using. All right, I don't have to check out this. I think we all know how to put a paint roller on, on a whatchamacallit, because now we're just going into the Barney phase. If I got to start showing you how to put a roller onto a, a paint um, roller, uh, it, we're in the Barney phase doing the demonstration. There's no point. All right, so my screen's 135 inches. It takes sort of an interesting way to remove it off the wall. Uh, these screens are not heavy. If you get some of those the cheaper screens, they can become heavy. But this thing is pretty lightweight. Thank you, Elite, because this is actually an Elite screen. Extremely lightweight. So, what I have to do is I have two screws up here. I'll take my chair, put one here, and then I'll take my second chair, 
I'm gonna put it right here. You know the beautiful thing about having a projector that has lens shift? I'm gonna tell you the beautiful thing about having a projector with lens shift. When you move your screen off, say you got just your projector mounted to your ceiling, right? So you're gonna have to, when you put it back, you're gonna have to adjust the pitch to fit just perfectly in there. But if you got lens shift, I can put that screen anywhere I want and I can shift the image right into that spot. That's what I love about lens shift. It's a beautiful thing, people. Where have I been to lens shift? On this side. I'm just gonna hit the chair. Let's see this connected from here. There we are, and we're free. That's it. Just two screws up there. Holding my screen in because it's freaking that lightweight. These screen that lightweight. There's two screws up there, oh, up there somewhere. All right, so I'm going to put you this way now. Because I have to bring the screen in to paint it. My neighbors are always taking their time walking past my house because they're always curious. What's he doing in there? Oh, well, well, whatever. All right, let me show you this part too, because you gotta see this, all right? So this is how we get it off the chair, because you're probably thinking like, okay, well, how do you get off the chair? All right, so we just remove one chair. Ugh, make sure I don't jack up my ceiling. Drop it to the ground. This out of the way. Vice versa, same chair here. It. And now we are on the ground. Now, I told you that when I got this house, that this house was huge. This house had windows galore. Like, person was obsessed with windows. There's windows everywhere in this place. So anyway, I love it because there's a lot of window light in here. So that's why I want to convert that screen to the floor rising so I can get my window light back because I really enjoy my window light. But in this area right here, I was thinking like, where the freak am I gonna put the screen at? Because I had never thought about putting the screen on top of the radiator. That didn't come until COVID. At that point, I was like, you know what, just forget it. I'm just gonna set this area right here. I'm gonna chill right here. This is where I'm gonna be at. So that's why everything is set up with the system, all this. All this was done up differently. So anyway, when I moved in here, I was like, so where am I gonna put the screen at? Because over in here, there's no place to put a screen at. There's windows everywhere in here. So that's not gonna work. And then I looked in here, and this was a dining room. This is literally a dining room table, and all this was in here. The people who had the place were going to give us everything in here. But I was like, no, nah, we don't need it because I need to put something here instead. So as I'm walking in here, I'm like, hey, look at the size of this window. This was made. So they put this giant window in here, and it overlooks the golf course. Once I move this off, you'll be able to see the golf course. People out there playing golf right now. If I ever am a little bit not too big into it, I'd be sitting out there all day if I was a golf fan, watching people play golf. And there's some people out there that are really freaking good. I mean, really good. So as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to turn the dining room into a theater room because it's perfect. But the problem is you can't put long throws in here because as you can see from bam to bam, you don't have enough room for a projector. So short throw or ultra short throw, and that's where the Ultima GT came in because I was using that for a while. But when I found out that Chrissy had a short throw lens on it, Thank you, Lord, because you're not supposed to get a projector, especially a Chrissy with an, a short throw lens for a hundred bucks. That lens costs more than the projector right now. Literally, if I even understand that, the Chrissy's when they came out were four to five grand when they came out. Now, since they've been on the market for a while, and these are the older version of these projectors, that projector is probably worth a thousand dollars. Um, if you find a good vendor, which I did, I was lucky to find a good vendor where I bought mine from. Um, some people sell them for 100 some people sell them for 200 It depends on how much lamp hours you have on it. Oh, by the way, lamp hours on that projector are 2,000. So two, uh, 2,000 hours. So I did find a vendor. I had to replace the lamp on that one. Uh, the lamp cost me $30. I can't give you the link yet until I put it into the projector to see if it functions. If it functions well, I'll give you the link and then you can get the... Um, <laughs> the lamp for like 30 bucks but long story short like i said coming in here that's where we christie's came in i actually were able to put the christie in here and take mine off the floor because my biggest fear of having my projector sitting on the floor and the size of my screen is when my god kids used to come over fear that they would kick the crap out of my projector and damage it 
So sensors up here don't have to worry about it. And for those of you who are thinking, I have two people saying, well, if you have the projector sitting here, don't you have heat dispersing back and forth? No, the heat from these projectors only come up to the front. And I got it in um, eco mode, so it's not really anything coming out of it. So since the kitchen is a good size, we kept the kitchen as for the dining room, like dining room slash kitchen, because the kitchen's a good size kitchen. So, you know, it's a, not a glorious kitchen, but I do like it. I like the towel, the, the house and everything, the crown molding and all that. So this stuff I kind of look for and I look at homes and stuff. You know, that crown molding, the, the granite tops and all that stuff like that. So it's a good size kitchen, you know what I mean? That leads out here to this area right here where I can come out here and chill and watch movies. And then it has a big backyard and driveway. But like I said, this is not a home tour. We're just, and I got to get this stuff out of here today. I got so much stuff because my friend was watching my videos like, good gracious, man, you're turning your kitchen into a, a work studio. I was like, yeah, I kind of am. So I'm going to be transferring a lot of this stuff down back to the basement. Uh, if I want, I'll just get out of the basement. Okay, so let's get going on here because I didn't mean to give you a house tour from the door. Um, whew, you know the story behind that machine? I bought that. Never used it. Just never used it. But eventually when I move... I think these houses over here are around uh, 15, 1500, no, 15, there you go, right there, there you go. I told you, they're going to be out there playing golf today. You'll see them when I put the camera up, there's a whole bunch of people out there. Usually on Sunday, you're out there like crazy. But anyway, um, this house is around 1550 or 1550 square feet. This is how big these houses are. Um, and they're, they're not, they're not bad, man. The prices are on here right across on the golf course. They're like 160,000 for these houses out here. And there's only three houses like this. One, two, three, uh, real quick, just real quick. The history behind this house was there was an owner be way before I ever knew there existed. There was an owner actually owned all three houses. This was his favorite. That's why this is the only house that has a deck on it and has the, it's gated off from all the other houses, but he owned all three of them. And then when he passed away, somebody came and bought them and they split it up. And now I have three other neighbors on this side. And then on my house, this side, which I love the most because I don't have any neighbors. I just have a golf course and that's it. So, you know, my neighbors never come outside. They're like freaking ninjas. They're never home anyway. Some, always someplace house, which is freaking cool. All right, so let's grab our screen and bring it in here. Heave ho! From heaven. Burning fireplace. The fireplace actually works. House, last house I lived in, uh, man, I wouldn't have trust that fireplace, man. If my, my light depended on it, thing probably would blow up and kill me a prop. All right. Ugh. It's not heavy. It's just big, that's all. Oh, man. It's not heavy. It's just a big, big screen. Whew. You don't realize how big it is until you get this sucker off the wall and you go, good gracious, this thing has some money. Watch it. Okay, now you see? See that bar right there? This is the imprint. This is what causes the imprint on your screen. So, which I should have grabbed that fabric over there before <laughs> it's going off the wall, but all the same way. You how you attach it. Now, keep in mind, this is the easiest spring support system. And I got to give Elite credit on this. This You really did a good job designing this screen. I mean, you really did a good job. This is the best spring system I've ever used on a screen. And I'll tell you why. I bought a generic screen one time and it had a spring support system on it. Oh, my goodness. It's like they made the screen too small and they made the springs too small. And literally, you had to go into the freaking incredible hawk mode just to stretch the fabric to connect to these uh, these springs. Of course there's a little rail inside of here so there's a rail right there as you can see that's the rail that runs right to the side and that allows you to connect the springs through and the springs connect to this little hook up there but yeah some of them that use these systems like this freaking nightmare nightmare i'm telling you all right so i don't know if i should sit this here look check it out check it out i'm using magical powers hold on for a minute All right, so this is one. I mean, I'm just here to have fun. All right, so this is what we do right here. See the cloth? I use a scarf. This is a really long scarf, right? So you want to take your scarf, and fold it in half if you want. You want to start. Well, actually, I do mine in threes. Sometimes in threes. 
right? And you want to shove it all the way up the camera, all the way up past where you're at, that area. Okay, so I'll show you real quick. So see, oops, I knocked you over. See right there how I got it all the way up? That's where you want to have it all the way up. And bring it all the way down. It's for that piece of metal to be piercing through when you hit it with that roller and you're going to get that imprint. It's going to look quite nasty on your screen. Because I had a few people saying, oh, your product streaked. Like, no, it didn't streak. Got a bar in the middle of your screen? Of course you do. I know you do. That's what happened. You got a bar in that. I had to put some fabric behind the back of that screen. See so all the way down there? Boom. Done. All right. I'm going to set you here. All right. I'm just going to bring it down. Put enough room to be able to tightrope around the screen. I move my projector, man. I don't want to move my projector. But even though it's right where it should be at. Now you see that bump in the middle of the screen? That's not going to affect your screen at all. Remember, your screen is on a uh, suspension system. It's nice and tight, so it's just going to bounce right back the way it is. Let's go over and gaze out the window. I barely ever get a chance to look at this window. Ooh, I know I just got to cut my yard, but I never got to doing it. I call it the yard of predator. Yes, this is why I own several ghillie suits because this is where I like to practice at. I got cameras that wrap around the house so I can walk through this area with that ghillie on and disappear in all that greenery. That's why I let the grass grow. And then see, keep in mind, we had a storm. It came through. I watched that tree fall right over. I was sitting over here and I just go boom. Watch that tree crash right there. Now you see them dead branches right there? Them dead branches way up there. I explained to the golf course that one of their branches had snapped off and smacked the side of the house, hit the driveway, and sprayed debris all up into the street. And their thing was, we'll get around to it. So I said, okay, no problem at all. You know what? Y'all can take your time. One of them did branches smack off and I get hit in the head with it. I'll just have my attorney call you. That's all. You don't want to clean up your crap because those branches right there, any dead branches protruding that far out are supposed to be trimmed. So they put some monitor and trim these branches because that thing, like I said, it's one of them snapped off. That one right there snapped off. And you can still see some of the debris in my junky backyard, but it snapped off. And when the wind hit it, it slammed the side of the house and then it just ricocheted out into the street. And like if anyone was walking down the street at that time, they would have caught it because the driveway is like a wind tunnel. When that air pushes through, it's like a wind tunnel. So, yeah, they would have gotten hit pretty bad. So I just explained to them that big old dead branch right there. When that thing finally snaps off in a windstorm, and it probably will, and I get smacked with it, I'm not going to bother calling you. I'm going to have my attorney call you. You can talk to him. All right. Um, let's get this started so we get this done. Now, I can't wait. Next house I'll be getting, I will say be my house because I will be buying it. It is going to be much bigger than this one. And I see, like I said, this house right here is 1,500 square feet. You do the math. That big. Well, I'm 52 years old. I don't plan to move any place else. So if I'm blessed to be able to have what God's going to bless me to have, from this incident that I went through, this ordeal, might as well get something nice, eh? It's gonna be the house. It's gonna be the house I plan to die in anyway, and it's got four acres on it, which means I can build whatever I want, design whatever I want, blah blah blah. And I have no one to complain about saying, "Oh, your speakers are too loud, or your system's too loud," because my system out there is freaking crazy loud, and it does disrupt my neighbor's comfort zone. Out there, I can build whatever I want. Hey, I even got in trouble one time out here. Not say I got in trouble, but somebody spoke on it. I had a screen out here I was building. They saw the scale of the screen. It was going to be like a 200-inch screen. But some neighbors across the street felt that it was going to be a bit of an eyesore to see a movie playing in the distance. And even though I'm on my own property, I had to basically break it down to a smaller size. So that's another reason why, too. All right, so let's begin this, this adventure we have started on. I'm not going to need all this. Now, you need lights here for this? Yeah, whatever. All right, I'm going to use strong tape because I explained to people that, you know, when you're doing your screen, you want to have strong tape. 
It's the only tape I have. And no, I'm not being paid to sponsor by Frog Tape. I like the product. It's good. Because Frog Tape, this is how we do those motorized projection screens. Oh, keep in mind, I got to do one of those next. Um, those motorized projection screens, how we get that laser cut edge. Is because I like Frog Tape. Because Frog Tape allows for the image. Not the image, my fault. Allows for when, when, when this area gets soaked, it causes a vacuum steel. That's what I like about it. All right. Um... I'm going to put you guys on a tilt. I wonder what kind of angry emails I'm going to get after this one. I told you after I do these videos, I get these rant emails from this particular individual. I'm going to show If he does post today, I'm going to show you his email. Well, not his busy stuff. But yeah. So let's see. So what you want to do when you're taping off your border... You want to tape this part right here, and you want to tape this part here. Remember, you can stick your hand in there, so you can actually press the tape around in there, right? So that's what you want to do. reason why you want to do your border, because just in case, if you miss with your roller, and you boop, boop, bump over top of it, at least it's it's good. You don't have to worry about that getting messed up. Let me grab something else to secure this a little bit better so my fireplace holds. Yeah, so... This winter, I only burn it for like, especially because it gives off that kind of like Christmassy look to it. That's you can call it Christmasly look to it. Um, but anyway, the wood doesn't last that long. It burns pretty quick. And But the good thing about it is the tree we have around back is a bit rotten and it has to come down. And it's a pretty big tree. So uh, I'm not going to be here that long, but it's enough firewood for like five. So we're just going to... Actually, what I should be doing is getting inside. So, you can't see that. I have to show you that right there. So, see right here? Putting the tape along the sides, just enough of it so it can tuck underneath. So, that's what you want to do first. You want to do your corners all the way around. Once you get your corners done inside, then after that, you want to go with the top part right there. So now you got a visual idea of what I'm talking about when you see me doing the inside like that. So let me show you. All right, so see how, how the tape kind of overlaps? See how it hits down here? Because you want to be able to bring it inside like that. See what I mean? That's why I you overlap it a little bit. So that makes sure when you do it that way, that when you're painting this screen, it's gonna be a lot of paint on the screen. That none of that paint basically hits your border in any way. Because you could have a little trace of that paint right down in the corner of your border that, ins that ensures it that when you wrap that tape on it like that that nothing's going to get in and destroy your border that's why you know I've a lot of things i didn't show you in close detail how to do this i don't think i did i think i taped off the screen and i painted it i didn't show you something like it's the first demonstration i'm showing you in detail how we're doing it all right Just going to repeat that process all the way around. Now, because some people say, well, I can't get in the corner areas of my screen. Take a sock. You dab your corners just a little bit, just a little bit. Just dab them corners with a sock, and then you just roll into that. That's all you got to do. Now you can do this with, you don't have to buy an Elite Screen if you don't want. It's just that I had to get the Elite Screen. Usually, if I'm doing 100 inch to 100, 100 inch to 120 inch, I'll get an everyday screen because they're cheaper. But the problem is when it comes to those particular screens, they don't make them at 135. They don't. 
They may make them at 150, but not 135. And I can't fit 150 where my screen is sitting. It's just not going to fit there. So I had to find a screen at 135. The only one that had 135 was the least. So that's why I chose this screen. The other two screens, the reason why I chose those because those screens are borderless and I wanted a borderless screen. Nobody had one except for Elite. They're the only ones that had that borderless screen. So that's why I bought their screens again. If another company had made the borderless screens, I would have purchased from them. But at the time, Elite was the only one that had it. Now it's the other companies with it. They have it too. So as you can see, I'm repeating the same process. You can take my hand and go under the screen. That ensures me that if any of that paint seeps through, it's not going to uh, it's not going to hit my border in any way whatsoever. It'll have a nice clean look to it. Get that side done. Come over here and do this side. Got tight with that one. A little bit. So if you're trying to answer a question, you may ask questions. Sorry, I can't do that because I can't be on the camera. So my email address is not posted there, but it is posted on some of my other videos. And you can go in there and have a look and see the next. Have a gander. Have a gander if you want. All right. There you go. That was one other strip right here to do. By a fireplace, which is going to get pretty interesting because I don't have to do it this way. I don't want to hit the fireplace. No, there's not enough room for me in the fireplace. So this is not, it's not a hard part to do, it's just a bit tedious, that's basically about it. Make sure you got underneath, move it go, move it down, go once over, move it down, it's nice. Okay, just want to make sure, want to tell people to go over it again with your hands, just in case, move it down, just want to make sure it's nice. Here to that surface. Now I don't use a blue tape. I have a blue painter's tape. I mean, maybe it works for some people, but it just doesn't work for me. So I, I stick with frost tape. That's what I like. Now make sure that when you're doing your corners, take your hand, press it in there. Doesn't make a difference if that tape pops or tears. You want to make sure it's fitting snug in there. All right. Oh, and real quick, take a little piece of tape like so. Make sure you're going to get those corners. I'll show you. Take tape like this. And you stick it right there in that corner. You bring it over. So that ensures that you're not going to have weak, have blocks of paint in the corners of your screen spilling out. You don't want that either. So I'm going to repeat that same process all the way around for you. Put that little barrier there right in there but like I said uh I'm bumped out I mean my eight percent of our sales I have 180 percent of our sales are United States sales but still I still like doing business with my overseas customers and it does bum me out that I can't I can't ship to them you know but you know it is what it is, and you have to just roll with the punches. You know, hopefully it doesn't last long. I just got to keep communicating back with them and seeing God how long this is going to last. For. All right, so we got our corners are pretty good. Now, next stage, you want to make sure that you got your borders completely 
sealed up. It's easier if you do this with the wider tape, but unfortunately, like I said, it's hard to get supplies here and there. You gotta take what you can get. And the only ones they had were the thinner ones because you know there's people out there still gouging, man. I mean, I paid you pay seven bucks for the wider one, and now they want freaking like fifteen, sixteen dollars for the wider one. So there's still some merchants out there just gouging, man. Um, a lot of you not want to go get a container of uh, of uh, sweetened Kool Aid, and that container somebody wanted sixty five dollars for that container. We all know that reason. Sixty five dollars for a container of Kool Aid. All right, so don't want to show you. Kind of like uh, if you ever did paper mache. It's the same thing, you know. You want to make sure you just cover everything up. Yeah. Like I said, the reason why I do this is because one time I did a screen. You learn from experience. I did a screen one time, and I felt that I didn't have to cover the top area because I'm not going to hit this. That's impossible. Oh, man. Yeah, you're going to avoid it, my friend. Uh, customers are still posting on our Facebook page of, their, of using our technology. And please send me pictures so I can post you on our, our Facebook fan page. Um, so, yeah. Um, like I said, you learn from experience. And I did a screen. I just did the corners of it. And that was it. And I thought that was enough. When I was rolling, my roller bumped over top the roller. And I, good thing I just wiped down, wiped it down. But still, you later learn. All right. This is why I like the, the borderless screens. This is the number one reason why. But Elite doesn't make, they do, I think they do make a borderless and 135, but it's, it was too expensive for me. Especially if I'm going to paint over the top of it. Now, for those of you saying, well, aren't you going to buy that floor rising projection screen for like 1400? Yeah, but that's floor rising. You know, you're always gonna pay a little more for that. This is what it can do. All right. Go back here, man. Start from here to here. Let's look from here and let's go up in the middle. It's easier here. Going all the way across. Motorized projection screens are really easy to do. I always tell people when you do those, and I gotta paint another one because I got a customer who has a, a setup that he wants to put outside, you know, because now, you know, it's just a lot more convenient. If you're dealing with COVID and you got a restaurant to have your setup outside, you know. So he wants a screen out there to add a little more perk to it for entertaining the guests. And uh, uh, right now, I came to the downstairs area under my deck. It's got a shady area. I don't think I have a lot of demonstrations under the deck. There's a few of them, but not a lot of them under the deck. So we're going to do some demonstrations uh, using uh, the motorized projection screen under the deck. Um, he wants to see what it's like in a shaded area. I haven't done too many shaded area demonstrations. And we're going to do that at around 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're going to see exactly um, when that screen is going to activate in between that time. Now keep in mind, when I do demonstrations outside, usually we're around 7 to 8. And there's no shading under the screen, but a uh, few people want to ex explore the possibilities of having the restaurants outdoors where people can go and eat. And to sweeten the pot, they want to put a projection screen out there. And this is where ambient light rejection technology plays a huge part. There you go. So just gonna put that out there real quick. So um, I'm gonna do a few demonstrations on the motorized screen under the deck. I already got it wired in. And then we'll see what time of the day when that screen is gonna activate. Now keep in mind, people that are using these projectors outside are not doing 3,000 lumen projectors. They're using dang projectors because they're designed for that kind of uh, environment. 
right, so let's come over here. Let's start from here. All right. I've got two rolls of this, but I don't think I'm gonna, I need two rolls, but we'll see. demonstration but usually keep in mind now you got an idea when I paint my screens you see those screens painted but I got what I do what I can go through when I paint these screens whole process of doing this but it's not a hard process it's worth it you know make sure you check everything Sometimes you may have some areas where the tape didn't quite meet well. There's another section. Just to make sure all that's nice and smooth. There we go. Perfect. That's how you want it. Looks like a green frame, doesn't it? All right, so we're going to come over here and we're going to work on this section right here. Ah, I got this part to do right here. Okay, I completely forgot. All right, so let's start from here. Take this in. Just about there. Just about out. But still, we got a good amount to go. We only got a little bit to go, so I'm curious if I can get this whole thing. If it's possible. I can get this whole thing done. Just this tape right here. Just this amount of tape right here would be nice. So that'll give you an idea of how much you need because if a customer is getting the screen, they're going to say, Well, how much tape do I need? I would like to say one. Thank you, man. You too. Which I have another one. I bought two of them just in case. Excuse me. All right, last part. Think we might be running out. Oh, there we go. We just ran out. Got another one. Good thing I bought two of them. So just about, just about. I'm gonna bring another one over here. So I'm glad I bought two of them just in case. Also, if you want to spray this, keep in mind you're going to plastic wrap your area like a crime scene because I explain to people, even though you feel that you have the paint sprayer under control, that when you spray, there is a residue in the air that has to come down. So keep in mind when I explain to people, when you spray a screen inside your house. You're going to have plenty of ventilation system the whole nine yards, but you're still going to have a residue that's going to come down. So that means that you're going to have to pretty much wipe down anything that was in that area where you were spraying that screen. And then you're going to have to basically tape off plastic wrap that entire floor area because keep in mind, as that spray is spraying out like this, spraying like this, you may be nailing the screen but right there, but that little inch right there could be spraying all along the side of your ceiling and everything else. So you gotta tape everything off. Treat it like a crime scene. Tape everything off, plastic everything off. I prefer to roll. So that's the biggest screen I've ever rolled. It was about a 180 inch screen.
I'm just tearing off bits of tape. Any area that I might have missed, you gotta do it like paper mache. That's all it is. Just paper mache. You just wanna make sure you get every spot, every corner, every inch. And you wanna make sure you smooth it down so that way you don't have any kind of open areas any paint to see through. Now, keep in mind, you're not going to paint the border, but like I said, this is like a safety area because just in case if you're rolling bumps up over, and it probably will, because I've done it a few times, um, you don't want to damage your border. Now, this is just me picking up any thing that might have landed on the screen, any lint. It's a little easy way to pick it up real quick. Some tape. That's about it. We're done. Now what you want to do is, let's see, we try painting. Just need to pick up any kind of, anything that made it fit the screen, anything that might have come off my clothing, and uh, hit the screen. Clean up my work area. Let's keep the work area nice and clean. I'm not worried about getting anything on the floor because it's tough to use the clean up off the floor when you're done. So you just want to do a little once over. Have a look around. Make sure that you've got all your areas. Nothing at all. Any paint can get through. All the way around. It's nice and sealed. like that. So we're going to make sure that's all nice and sealed. And you're good. Now the beautiful thing about frog tape that once it gets wet, it causes that vacuum seal. That's the beautiful thing about it. That's what I like about it. All right. All right. So let me get my mess here. Okay. I'll grab a roller. Now we're going to make our paints in here. The reason why my paints in here because I had to make enough of it to cover the screen. There's about two quarts in this. Two quarts is all I need to cover the screen. That's it. There's a black technology right there. Just gonna make sure my hand are back to scare this up a little bit. Keep my stirrers downstairs. Keep my stirrers and stuff downstairs in the basement. So now we're just going to take this and no special way of pouring it out. You just take it and just run it down your screen. No way, special way to do it. Right across the screen. 
grab some of that paint right there. Using part of my screen as a paint pan. Well, you can't do that because the screen is dry uneven. Man, that's traditional screen paint. This is not traditional. It's just something different. You don't have to worry about that. Stuff that you can have to make my blue screen. But the minute you put that stuff on, you have to do an up and down robot formation. Couldn't leave in the screen. And that's one of the things people were doing back then. The blue screen was all the rage. They were going on there and spending days, and I mean days, I'm not joking with you, I mean days, sanding down their wall, they get a perfect flat image, so they can apply their screen paint. And this was the YouTube screen paint. It was a screen paint somebody made up. I forgot the fellow who did it, but it was a cheap mix. It was basically just gray and black. That's what it was. It was the fellow who made this. It was gray and black screen paint, a couple of teaspoons. I'll find the video. Let's see if I can find the video. Now, see, this is what I'm telling you right now. Just told you why you want to coat your borders. See that right there? Easy, easy to roll. Now, if I didn't have that taped off, I would have damaged my border that fast. That's why. That's that insurance there. But yeah, I'm going to show you the first one of the first videos. Oh, shit, my chair, my chair. Shoot, I said shoot. I said that's a good word. I can see that this conversation. I ain't worried about the paint drying even. So, this, like I said, a kid could paint this screen with no problem. I can talk to my cell phone while that dries right there and repaint it. it won't show on the screen. Uh, I'm going to show you one of the videos. These are one of the first videos where people started showing off uh, making the screen paint. And it was called a YouTube screen paint. And it was basically teaspoons uh, so of white paint with teaspoons of black. Way before you know who came up with that idea. Somebody else had it first. And I remember that. They were using pearlescent. Pearlescent as a form of, of darkening the screen with a little black. And this fellow pretty much was showing it off. And his garage of his home, I think it was over in California or somewhere he was at. Florida was one of those places he was at, but he was showing it off. I'm gonna find his video as the screen dries and show you that demonstration. But eventually, a few of those ingredients, and it was a gray screen. It was a light gray screen. But unfortunately, a few of those, video, a few of those chemicals that they were using to make that product became extremely hazardous, and eventually they pulled them off the market. Can't find that original. But it was just a gray screen. You do the same thing with black and white paint. But anyway, so, when Goose Screen came out, Goose Screen demonstration, and I posted a demonstration so you can see how crazy it was to paint with a screen on the roller. I've been painting for years. I have no idea what the freak you mean by a perfect application on the roller. So, you know, all right, whatever. And your surface had to be crazy, super smooth because if you had any kind of lines, any kind of imperfection, on the screen. That's where it's going to pop up, right up on your screen. So, these people will come in there with these sanders. They sand their wall down. Keep in mind, you sand, it's going to be residue, powder, all that stuff you sand your wall. They had to bring in machines to extort. I actually take all that, that sand and stuff out the window. Some kind of a uh, system, the vacuum system, we get that out of there. And I watch those demonstrations of ABS front people who are spending two, three weeks sanding a wall down. So and then we came on there and did the demonstration. I had this wall I showed you in the demonstration. It was all marked up, paint all over it, looked like trash. Coated that screen, do, 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 done. Oh, they didn't like that. They didn't like that because everybody swore by that religion that you had to do all this sanding in order to apply a screen. That it took months to have the perfect screen. And I came on here and did it less than 30 minutes. Dried the screen, produced an image while the screen was still wet. That demonstration I showed. And that's what got us kicked off ABS forms. Because we want to get somebody, we want to get somebody to advertising. Advertising? I had my own website. I was making sales already. I'm going to advertise up your site. If that's the case, and I needed ABS forms to push my business, then wouldn't I still need them now? No. No, we don't need y'all. 
just that they got mad because they were telling everybody else that it had to be done this way. And we came on and did it that way. And everybody got, that particular individual got mad because he was getting a lot of publicity. Couldn't patent. He couldn't, he couldn't get a patent pending for it. You can get a patent pending for anything. There's a lot of stuff. People don't understand. There's a lot of stuff that has patent pending on it. Fisher Price, some of my stuff. The, that Bo Moore has a patent pending on it. All they have to do is just keep renewing the patent. Patent pending. Look that up. He couldn't get a patent pending for it. You ever seen the application for a patent or a patent pending? Or if you ever seen a mechanical patent? Oh, my mechanical patent's a nightmare. But if you ever seen a patent pending, they will ask you, require what chemicals that you are using to make up that product. The reason why they ask for that is because if somebody comes along and say makes your product, you take them to court and you take their product and what they'll do is they'll take it to a lab and they'll break it down, the original one on the patent pending. And if there's a high amount of numbers of what's in there, they'll follow the lawsuit. You basically, you have a, a, um, a, a, a lawsuit with some weight with it. So that's why they ask you what's in it. Not only would they ask you what's in it, but they want to know if any of the chemicals you have in there may be dangerous to consumers. That's why everything we use are all water-based products. So um, the chemical that he displayed for free had four or five and not know what you're doing, you could pretty much hurt yourself pretty bad. I mean, pretty, pretty bad. So that's why he never patented it. And that's why we had that conversation. So you can't patent this because it won't it won't it won't pass uh, safety procedures. They'll never let it let it let it um, they'll never let it out the door. That's why. That's the reason why. I'm gonna see if I can do this. There was red writing throughout the entire thing. Are we done here? I think we're done. All right. So let me grab something real quick. Let me show you something real quick. Um, we'll take this right here. Now, for those of you now, my screen. Keep in mind black to begin with so doing the corners we're already done on the screen but just in case if you have a white screen you're going to see the little corners stick out and see it's fucking daylight timing so what you want to do is take your paint here <clears throat> yeah i'm still into the screen i almost don't almost like you know the picture that i <laughs> that i have of myself in this neighborhood i'm not a bad person but I stay to myself. I don't talk to anybody. I have a few people that I chat with here and there. But keep in mind, if you're a neighbor, you lived across the street, you're watching my lights go on and off and on and off and on and off and on and off. Wouldn't you think something kind of strange about that? And I realize I'm in the house doing lights on and lights off on demonstrations. Or I live here by myself. So, you know, you're hearing me talking, having a conversation like, yeah, and so and so and la 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 la. Now, they think I could be on my phone, maybe. I don't know. But. They don't realize I do a lot of live streams and stuff. So, yeah, it's, uh, they, they, they find me quite interesting. They do. I had a few finally venture over and ask me what did I do. You know, they see me setting up screens, do a video. I'm not even out there that long to watch the movie. And then I basically just disappear. I'm like, what the freak does he do? All right. I should say like, oh, what I do for a living? I actually test these spandex on underwear. That's what I do. All right, that's this is wrong. All right, so you take a little bit of this right here. This is residue on me. And you just go in your corner like this. And then, because you can't get in there with the roller. You can't get in the roller, right? So that's what you do right there. So someone's going to say, oh, but that's going to leave something sloppy there. It's going to mess up the screen. No, it's not. You take your roller. Like that. I'm going to try to mark my wall to this thing. And you just go in your corner like that. And then you come over here. And you just take it from the corner from here, right? Like so. And you go right back up. That's it. That's just to make sure you can get in that little corner right there. That's all. Just soak it down in there. And then you just take your roller and go right in there. Smooth it out. That's all you got to do. You're done from there. All right, so let's uh, get this stuff. Sorry for doing this, but I have to. Um, 
I have to cover my roller up because I can't leave it on the floor. So I wouldn't suggest you use these, but if you have a plastic bag, which I don't have any bags in the house, um, just cover it up. That's all. Now we keep it safe over there and lay it down. So you don't have to worry about uh, messing up your floors. Just watch it out with some hot water. So we're done. All right, so while this dries, which I should have my fan over here too for this. I should have my fan. I'm going to take some of these projectors downstairs. There's too many up here. Better fan. And this is probably the most these people have seen me walking past the window. There we go. Golf cart ahead. I don't know if you see it right there in the distance. You probably don't. They're probably like, is this guy recording us to this giant bay window? Maybe. Okay. So we'll move over this with the side. Right there. Let's see if I got the right side on this. Let's see. Sorry, I'll set you right there for a minute. Yeah, but let me see if I can find this guy because. We're designing that paint. But yeah, if you've never seen a demonstration with goose screen, all you gotta do is type in how to paint a goose screen in YouTube, and it'll pop up. Watch about two or three hours of that demonstration, you'll be like, good gracious, that's what they had to do? Yep. And keep in mind, uh, before I can talk something about a company, I had to try their product, which I did buy their product. And at that time, goose screen was like four to $500 eight hundred dollars for a gallon yep and that thing was something else to paint in you can't see that i can see that but you can't see that i can see the golfers well that's what we're about to do right now it's around 30 minutes with a fan since this is a bigger screen like a screen like that would take about 30 minutes to dry that's 106 126 we're talking about 135 it's best that i have one fan on one side and one fan on the other side to dry the screen even faster, but uh, I say about 30 40 minutes probably at the most to dry. It's a big screen. I don't need to be paying any more high electric bills. I'll get around the rest of the stuff later. Um, let's see. Oh, god, it's hot in here, man. Whew, the air conditioner just for a little bit. That's the computer I'm working on right now. I just got the Wi Fi card in. Yesterday, that's the Wi-Fi card. So I can put that online with the wireless keyboard. So I can run my older, com my older, uh, what do you call it? My older um, uh, projectors, because some of my projectors will not run off that, uh, that adapter. Let's see if I can go back. I found, you know, you want to look up one of my really old, old video demonstrations from way, way back. Look up my projector. My first projector when I purchased it was a uh, BenQ MS500. Look that up under Digital One Crystal Screen Paint. You will see my first demonstration I ever did. First demonstration I ever did. Oh man, I had to post that video. That was a long time ago. I'm in here looking at Epson projectors. You know why I'm in here looking at Epson projectors? Because I saw this. Let me see if I got this on here. But I saw this is what I saw that caught my eye today on the Epson projector. I may have to invest and buy one of these. This is what we call large venue projectors. You see this right here? This projector right here? This projector has interchangeable lenses, and I mean some insane interchangeable lenses. That is an ultra short throw lens for that projector. See all those lenses I can change out on that projector? I'm gonna have to get one of these. I'm gonna have to. Because if I keep in mind, my projectors I have around here are perfect for, um, for, for customers, because no customer is gonna have a, a monster like this sitting in their living room. This is a really, this, these are used for, for, for businesses. I have contracts with companies this would be a nice projector to use because this is what they're using in their demonstrations of course this is going to be a freaking cakewalk on the technology but still 
it is going to be I, I've got to get this man this this has a short through lens automatically I'm pretty much thinking maybe I'm scared to figure out what the price of this thing is going to be it's going to be up there it's not going to be uh, an adjusting color oh yeah this this is going to be beautiful so I'm going to have to research this a little bit and see what this will cost me all right um let's go pop over to YouTube let's see Um, I have, uh, actually, I do have the BenQ downstairs. It's really old. It's an old BenQ. I got it for 50 bucks. It may be older than the one you're showing, one you're talking about right now. But I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Oh, uh, let me see. Oh, my 15, my 15,000 Lumen fake projector is going to be coming in pretty soon. So we're going to be doing that demonstration pretty soon. Uh, I got my tracking number and all that information. For those who don't know, I went on eBay and I bought a 15,000 lumen 4K 1080p knockoff projector uh, that will be here shortly. And we're going to use that massive 15,000, not 1,500, sorry, 15,000 lumen projector against a thousand lumen projector. If you got a chance to check out that demonstration yesterday, I know I wasn't supposed to be doing any video, I couldn't help myself, but I showed that demonstration telling everybody it was a 1080p projector when I was actually like a, one of the lowest projectors we had in the shop. I love doing those demonstrations, those are fun to do. All right, um, let's go, uh, we're on YouTube right now. I can find this stuff. I mean, I think it's a Galaxy. Galaxy projectors. I wish I could find one of those. They don't make those anymore. Let's see. Goose screen. All you got to do is put in how to paint a goose screen. That's all you got to put in, and it'll pop up. If you got time in your day to watch that demonstration, please do. I do advise you carry a small tack hammer so you can bang your fingers and your toes to keep yourself from falling asleep. And trust me, it's that long of a demonstration. Trust me. It's three applications, and I think it's like six hours for each application to dry. It's insane, trust me. But at that particular time, that was the only thing that was out. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, no, no, you got to put on do it yourself. Do it yourself. Gray. Screen paint mix. I don't know how old this video is going to pop up. If we can find this guy, if he's still around. There you go. Right there, how to paint a goose screen. Found it for you right there from the door. Boom. Watch that demonstration right there. How to paint a projection screen. That's from goose screens. Check that demonstration out. Check it out when you have time. You'll be like, really? Yeah, it, seriously, that's how it will screen. Now, I'm going to show you something right here. Now, this is a screen. This is a cheap paint mix for a project called Ghost Gray. The difference in contrast and backgrounds. That's why I said people don't really know what contrast actually looks like. I'm going to mute this because I'm not going to play his voice because that's kind of rude. I don't do that, but you got to see this. This is what people consider to be contrast. A minute. Oh, you got, oh this is just, oh, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Just a little commercial popping up. They consider that to be contrast. You see that? That is a great screen trying to do an OLED demonstration. That background is supposed to be jet black. Now, the reason why they consider that to be a contrast level, because you see how the white wall 
not picking up contrast right here. They think this is contrast right here. It's supposed to be two different forms of black here. So you're supposed to, supposed to be black, and this is supposed to be a um, this is supposed to be a different shade of black. So you you have to be to show multiple shades of black. Let me go back to uh, really quick. Let me bring up my other channel. Let me bring in my channel real quick. And we'll just show you the video I show you that I did outside when I painted a screen outside. Let's see. If I can go to my, I think I need to go to my home. See if we can find this one. It should show up right here in my videos, but it's not there. Let's go drag it. Let's see. Uh, all right. There we go. This is why black technology is supposed to work outside. Now, mind you, we're not even inside the house, we're outside the house. I'm going to find a really dark demonstration on here. That's outside. So that black level pops, that's paint. I'm gonna do one with the 12 outside. Paint on demonstration outside with the 12 and for anyone who says well you can't pull up bright colors there you go i'm actually showing a screen while you're looking at my screen painting how berserk that is this is a screen that i built for myself so i can use my ultra short though up here and i'm actually showing you a screen of my screen paint on my screen paint just blew your freaking mind your freaking mind just now that crazy your what and this is the screen that you just saw see how image pulls up right here on the light gray screen remember in the demonstration the light gray screen that's what they consider to be contrast that's not contrast This right here, I'm doing outside illustration. Which, like I said, today I'll get a chance. Well, not today, or probably tomorrow, I'll get a chance to do the demonstration under the deck because I have to do that for the customer who wants to see how the screen is going to react outside. There you go. There's a star field demonstration outside. This video right here got a lot of interest because no one saw anyone ever paint a screen outside and all that ambient light and produce an image with no problem. And keep in mind for some people saying, well, you know, you're probably using a high power projector. I've done this demonstration on a thousand lumen projector to all feedback outside it with the light with all this same thing. It's uh it's just a shame what they consider now to be uh, ambient light rejection. Now his area is protected because he has the walls and ceiling, all that's protecting from any form of ambient light. 
where we do our ambient light rejection demonstrations outside because there's nothing the screen can hide from. There's no way you can use any form of ambient light controlled environment that's canceled out. There's no walls out there to protect the screen from any form of ambient light. That screen's being hit from ambient light from every area that screen is being hit and it's still producing an image without a problem. And I've done that on a thousand lumens outside. There we go. Sony projector outside, thousand lumens. That's it. Here's my image I'm pulling up. That is the platinum eclipse outside. Pulling that image up. At a thousand lumens outside. So keep in mind, I explain to people that the farther your projector sits back, uh, the more lumens you're basically going to lose by the time it makes contact with the screen. Outside, you're going to lose a ton of lumens extremely fast. That's why when you see projectors outside for venues, they're 6,000, 7,000, 10,000, because they know darn well all that ambient light, stage light, and whatever they have out there is going to kill off their lumen count at a rapid pace. So they have to make sure they have enough lumens to die in the process and enough lumens to make destination with the screen where the screen's gonna have to pull a high enough image. The problem is they're actually depending solely on the projector. That's why their lumens are so high. They use a white screen, of course, most of them use all these white screens anyway. So they use a white screen and they'll go out and they'll get this high power projector thinking that they got 50,000 lumens is at 30, 40 feet back that they're gonna lose about 10, 20,000 lumens at the most, and at least 30,000 will make contact with the screen, and they'll be able to pull off a beautiful image. They can't figure out when 30,000 hits that screen, why the screen looks so white screen with 30,000 lumens, you're gonna whitewash your screen. Like I said, it's the same equivalence of going out in a snowstorm without sunglasses. It's called snow blind, can't see jack. But the minute you put them dark glasses on, you can see everything. So that's what they're doing, that's why the screen's whitewash. That's why the screens don't start to look better until it gets darker outside because that's less ambient light the screen has to deal with and that's more power the projector has to hit but still the image still looks eh. We did that demonstration already. But these are some of the great mixes that people have been doing for years, man. For years. When did I do this video? Uh, two years ago. I'm trying to find that one fellow. He did this in the garage of his, uh, of his house. And it was actually one of the first ones that, they show, that he shows you how to, how to go way back. Yeah, people have been doing this for years. It's easy because, like I said, it's a gray screen. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to take a gray screen. Uh, what were your full rising projection screen be here? I'm going to get it in September. I'm getting it in September the 29th. I'm buying it on my birthday. It's my birthday gift. So that's when I'm buying it. That's my gift to myself. I'm going to get myself a full rising uh, screen. And by that time, it'll be just in time for the um, PS5 when it, when it launches. Oh, please, I hope they don't set this thing back because that would be like a really, really th huge thorn in my side. Because what I want to do with it, it's called Vivastorm. <coughs> if those of you, excuse me, who want a floor rising projection screen, you call Vivastorm. It's a floor rising screen. They look pretty good from what I've seen. My concern, I don't care about the screen because I'm just going to paint over with our technology, but I'm more concerned about the motor in these screens because if your motor goes, you're screwed because this is not a screen you can manually pull up. It's a motor. Once that engine motor dies, you're not getting that screen out of that box. So I want to make sure if I'm going to cough this up, I'm just watching how many people have had this, if they had any problems with the motors whatsoever. I couldn't care less about whether the visual is good or not on the screen because it's going to be covered under technology anyway. But I'm more concerned about this screen when it basically um, rises out of the floor, how many people have used it, and if they had any complications with them. So that's one of my main concerns. But other than that, 
I haven't found anything bad on it, and everybody gets hired with you, so I'm getting one. So uh, I can fit one barely, a hundred inch barely, because it'll go be 64 inches high on top of the radiator. And on top of that, I'm trying to see if it has any, uh, oh, nice if it had a USB port on the back of it, which we know it's not going to have. But I have a friend of mine, he's a master whiz at wiring things in. So I want him to wire in LED lights into this uh, setup. So when it comes up, it just comes up like a UFO. It just shows all neon blue, like the PS5. That's what I want. That's the only thing I want to do to the screen. I'm going to find this guy. I'll, f I'll figure out where he's at, but I'll find him. Phantom Gray, Phantom. Yeah, he's one of Phantom Gray screens, but like I said, uh, I'll find him. It's an old video. Like I said, it's an old, old, old video. It goes back to like probably like 2012, something like that. So I have to track him down through there. This is something else that's popping up. That's what I'm saying. It's the, you can't do contrast on a gray screen. They're not going to show up, and the image is just blurred. They'll stick with very bright colors, which will have a better chance. But contrast, not going to come up on that screen at all. Good though. All right, let's get back down to the, the black technology. This will be me. That's the demonstration I did yesterday. That is a thousand lumen 720p picture in that demonstration. Those of you who saw that demonstration you know what I'm talking about. That was a thousand lumen 720p SVGA projector in that demonstration, pulling that image off. And that technology was coded on styrofoam. That reminds me, trying to get on Amazon. I got to order some lights for the downstairs. I'm going to have a little have a look at the screen. All right, let's go have a look at the screen. Let's see where we're at in this. There you go. See that stuff right there? Dried, still wet. Now, if I had usually on a screen size, I would have fan here and a fan here, but I don't only have one fan in here. So what I should do is I should have my fan this way, have it more this way, so that way it can cut straight across. But it's getting there. It's getting there. So um, what I'll have to do is I'll have to make two parts of this because that's not going to dry in time um i gotta let that dry a bit i guess by the time i clean up around the house get some things done and then i'll um i'll leave this i won't hang the screen up i won't take the um i will hang it up i'm gonna leave it just where it's at so when the video starts again everything is going to be right where it's at i already have a 4k projector already picked out i'm getting a chrissy 4k projector that's what i'm picking up you don't want to know the price tag. I don't even want to think about the price tag, but I need it. I love, I'm going to have Christie's throughout the whole house. That's all I'm going to have is nothing but Christie's. It's going to be much bigger than that thing. It's probably going to be about... <laughs> it's probably going to be about that freaking big. It's a huge venue projector. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to basically probably mound it right there. It's going to have to be mounted there. Because there's no way anywhere I'm walking in front of that thing, man. Uh, the 52 had to go because I was walking in front of the 52 and the 52 was giving me headaches. You walk, bam, 5200 lumens hit you in the, in the side of the face. So this one's not that bad. I'm used to being hit with 40, um, 42. That's easy. I'm used to it. But the 52 was too much. And the projector, I'm actually going to get the crispy 4K, maybe 7,000 lumens. But they don't make them. They don't, like I said, these are used for venue projectors. They don't make them on that scale. I can't get a 3,000 4K crispy. They don't make them like that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in later on. Um, I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I'm just going to clean up around here a little bit. I'll peel off the tape so you can see all that. 
and then we'll hang the screen up and I'll throw on the Chrissy short throw and we'll watch the screen from there. All right. So I'll be back on. Okay, everybody be safe. Have a good one. And uh, God bless. I'll put some information on the bottom where you can get the screen paint. All right, got to go. And uh, God bless again.